how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today I am talking about the year 2021 and what an incredible year it was for vinyl collecting. This is my year-end review. I will be discussing the highs and the lows that happened every month of 2021. We had some great releases, a lot of fun, some controversy, debates, just a really interesting year. Prices went up and also we had some delays, but for the most part, it was a very good year. And I'm gonna be discussing some of the highlights for me and I would love to hear what the highlights of 2021 were for you in vinyl collecting. So if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, hit the like button and the notification bell. It really helps my channel to grow. So let's go ahead and get started with the month of January. And January was an interesting month where at the very early phase, we were still tracking down McCartney 3 color variants. I know a lot of people were out there trying to collect as many color variants as they could. And I picked up a couple of them. I got the independent record store uh, white vinyl version as well as the third man records red. And that was a lot of fun and a great way to bring in the new year with wonderful Paul McCartney. Also, we got a couple of incredible releases from Blue Notes Classic Series. We got Speak No Evil by Wayne Shorter. This is a tremendous record and a wonderful one to add to the jazz collection, as well as a personal favorite for my husband and I, Song for My Father, the Horace Silver Quintet a gorgeous record. So I would say that was a very successful month. On a personal month, uh, note, I also was able to get a wonderful original master recording version of the Chicago Transit Authority. So that was a personal thrill for me. So that was really, really wonderful and a great month of January. We move on to the month of February and the much anticipated Run DMC's Raising Hill finally came out by Mobile Fidelity, the original master recording. Sounds incredible. I love that they uh, got into a hip hop record, such a classic from the 80s. And I was thrilled to be able to get a copy of that. February also was a month of controversy. And I have a very vivid memory of coming home from a day of work, taking my shoes up, off, putting up my feet and watching Billy Hurst's video. And he made an incredible video about Metallica and the Walmart exclusives. And before the video was even over, I had my shoes on and I was running to Walmart to get these exclusives. And they're gorgeous, wonderful exclusives from Walmart. I love all of them. I was able to pick up four immediately at my local Walmart and had a little trouble picking up a couple others. So thankfully, Jim from Texas sent this tremendous Master of Puppets copy my way. Thank you, Jim. And he also alerted me that this Metallica Kill em All was back in stock on Walmart's website. So I picked up all of the Walmart exclusives of Metallica, which was really cool to me. I made an exciting video about it and wow, talk about a controversy. I got a lot of feedback, people really mad that I went to Walmart and bought records and I hear you. I do a lot of record shopping at record stores. I just couldn't resist picking up these colored vinyl variants. I had been wanting to build my Metallica collection up and I thought this was a great way to do it. So, um, you know, that was kind of a controversy for the month of February, the Walmart exclusives. And a lot of people have talked about the Walmart exclusives um, from then on. Should we buy them? Should we not? I say, it's your decision. You should do what works for you. Now I want to move on to the month of March and it kind of came in with a whimper for me. This is uh, Paul Stanley's Soul Station Now and Then. And this is a really nice uh, record with versions of Motown hits that Paul Stanley and Soul Station came up with. Very refreshing. 
you might want to ask yourself, do you really need Paul Stanley and Soul Station uh, doing remakes of Motown records that you can easily find? And you know what? I love Motown and I love Paul Stanley, so I happily bought this record. I don't think it sold very well, but I don't know that that was Paul Stanley's intention. I don't know that he thought that it would. I think it's just for fun. I think it was something he wanted to do as a side project. And my heart goes out to Paul Stanley because I really feel like he had a very rough year. He lost his dad. Um, he lost some people um, that were in his crew. There's been a lot of controversy about KISS and their tour and their protocols for the pandemic. I think he's had a very tough year and um, I give him credit for just keeping, uh, keeping moving forward. So that was very interesting. On a positive note as well, in March, I was able to get this wonderful Miles Davis MoFi version of Porgy and Bess. I don't know that it has, it's going to get a reissue and I probably snagged one of the last coffees. So that was really incredible. Also, I was very fortunate and blessed to get a tremendous gift in March that was so incredible that I really thought it might be a prank. I thought when I, in fact, I did my very first unboxing of a, a record because I thought this is either going to be really, really tremendous or this is going to be a huge prank. Either way, I was going to record it. Sure enough, it was wonderful. Michael from Nebraska sent me this tremendous gift. Uh, this is uh, Simon and Garfunkel's One Step of Bridge Over Troubled Water. It came out quite a while ago. I wasn't going to pay the price uh, that it costs on the secondary market, and he sent it to me as a gift. So what a wonderful way to end March. That was a great month for me uh, on a personal level, and I really loved it. And now we move on to the month of April and some really crazy good releases that came out this month. We had first off Cheap Tricks in Another World. Here comes the summer. The summer looks good on you. The weather was starting to warm up in April. We were starting to feel spring coming on and this was a tremendous record. I love that Cheap Trick is still putting out great music. Also, this is one that arrived at my doorstep in the month of April. The One Step for Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and it made me so very happy. I know a lot of people were getting tired of some of the releases that were coming out by Mobile Fidelity at that time. The controversy was a little bit about tired releases. And of course, this had already been available as an original master recording record, and then they put it on a One Step. I love this record. And so I was happy, but I understand what where people are coming from. And all I can say is just uh, hang on. Something really exciting is coming out in 2022. A lot of great stuff and a lot of new stuff. Also, on a personal note, I bought this police box set. I think it's really good. It is half speed mastered. It's digitally sourced. And there's a lot of controversy about what Abbey Road is doing with their half-speed mastering with digital sources. Um, some people like the Rolling Stones records, others don't. There's a lot of mixed reviews. I know audiophiles in particular do not like what Abbey Road is doing with the Rolling Stones catalog. So that was part of what was going on in April. We can move into the month of May. And we've got Ray Charles. This is an acoustic sound series release along with Gil Evans, Out of the Cool. Two really great releases that came along. Also, this was the month that I made my very first record trade. I traded a Taylor Swift 1989 Record Store Day album. Uh, it sells for over $1,000. And I traded it for some other jazz records that I had been wanting. Um, I got some flack for the video, like the thumbnail. I was going like, uh, or something like that. Uh, people didn't really like that thumbnail. But this is the highlight that really came out of it for me. This is the Craft Recordings, Yusef Latif Eastern Sounds. I love this one. And I got copy number six, which I thought was really crazy. This is one of many records that I got in that trade. It is one of my favorite jazz albums. So for me to do the trade was worth it. 
And it also brings back memories of how crazy that Craft Recordings small batch fiasco was where they were only selling a thousand copies within less than five minutes maybe. They were all sold out and left a lot of people mad. So that was pretty crazy. Also in the month of May, we saw uh, the uh, UHQR Miles Davis kind of blue starting to come out and they're still making them and uh, releasing them. There was a huge order. I think they made like 25,000 copies of it. So that was really, really wonderful. We can move on to the month of June and Mammoth, uh, Wolf Van Halen's first debut release. Uh, Eddie's son put out this wonderful record and he made a very tear jerking video of his song called The Distance and just showed how wonderful his dad was as a father. And uh, I really enjoyed that. And this is a really good record. I'm so glad that he's doing so well. We also had some incredible Blue Note classic series releases with uh, Jimmy Smith uh, uh, back to at the Chicken Shack as well as Sonny Clark's Cool Strutton and Record Store Day appeared. And here's a couple highlight records that I was able to get, The Police Live. This one is red vinyl, this one's blue vinyl. And uh, there were a lot of really great releases for Record Store Day that month. And those are just a couple of them that I was able to get. So June was an incredible month as well. We're moving on to the month of July and it was a very exciting month for me. I got my new turntable and I have never looked back. My records sound incredible. And along in the month of uh, July, we also got the blues and the abstract truth as well as Sonny Rollins on Impulse from the Acoustic Sound series. Great releases. We got Alice Cooper's Schools Out. And as you already know, I got the pink panty version. So that was a very cool release. And we had another record store day. And um, you know, the thing that was the biggest talk of record store day, the DGs had everybody screaming, hail Satan, <laughs> instead of hail Satan. I don't know why that was, but everybody kept pronouncing it hail Satan that month. It was pretty humorous. This is a great uh, record. It's a lot of fun. I saw it on a Holy Moly Mall for $175, and I will tell you this, it's not worth that much, but it was a lot of fun and a great release, and what we were all talking about in the month of July. Here's what we were talking about in the month of August. I really don't remember anything else getting talked about. George Harrison's All Things Must Pass, whether you got the collector's gnomes or a basic 3LP set. I got the colored vinyl version myself. This was the talk of April, or I'm sorry, August. What a great release. It got mixed reviews as far as sound quality goes, but uh, no one can argue this is a wonderful record. Uh, we can now move on to the month of September, and I got to go on vacation and anytime I can do record shopping and walking on the beach, that is a tremendous time for me. So I got a great vacation in Florida. I got to buy a lot of really cool records from record stores. I also thought it was a great month for, again, the Blue Note Classic Series. We got Herbie Hancock's Maiden Voyage, as well as Eric Dolphy's Out to Lunch. And so many people have described Eric Dolphy as being really far out there, and I get it. He is more of a um, individualistic kind of a player. You know, he doesn't follow the rules. He uh, doesn't color in the lines, but I thought this was a great record, and I really love it. And the most popular catchphrase of the month of September, the Eagles have landed. <laughs> The Mobile Fidelity One Step for the Eagles. I picked their debut album up, but they're also their second LP was also available. This sounds really great, and it was a really great way uh, to celebrate the month of September. We move into the month of October, and I feel like the year went as fast as this video is going. And of course, three words, let it be. Tremendous box sets. Wonderful remix of the album. This was a great celebration of the Beatles once again. 
I am not disappointed. The box set's incredible. I also have the Walmart exclusive. There was so much to celebrate with this release. So I love that the month of October was all about the Beatles. We can move on to the month of November. And uh, for me, it was Mingus, 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 Mingus. Uh, of course, I'm talking about acoustic sound series. He had two wonderful Charles Mingus releases, this one and the Black Saint and the Center Lady, two killer records. I am slowly but surely building up a tremendous jazz collection. Also, we had another record store day and the beautiful Tammy Terrell. This was the Elemental uh, Music Label release. Fab, fantastic. And I know a lot of you had a lot of fun at record store day and got some great stuff. And also I discovered Barney Whelan, and this is a record that truly touched my soul. And I, it didn't come out in the month of November, I just discovered it at that time, thanks to Elemental Music. A tremendous, beautiful record that I am going to enjoy for years to come. Also, the month of November for me was all about Bob Dylan. I got to see him in concert, sitting by my niece, he is her favorite artist, and just seeing her face light up made me so happy. And Bob Dylan was really good. He was frail, but his voice was strong, and he put on a great performance. So I have been really into uh, some really great Bob Dylan releases, and I am all about this wonderful box set that sounds incredible. I talked about it in length in last week's video. So for me, November was a lot about Bob Dylan. And that brings us up to December, where we are now. And I know it's still early in December. There's so much to look forward to. But of course, a lot of us are already grabbing our Duke Pearson from the Blue Note Classic series. This is a wonderful record. I highly recommend you adding it to your Christmas collection, as well as Ella Wishes You a Swinging Christmas from the Acoustic Sound series. Another great one. And unfortunately for a lot of KISS fans who ordered from KISS online, they are still waiting for their KISS Destroyer Super Deluxe box set. Uh, really crazy that they weren't the first ones to get it. And also paying full price while Amazon and other places had, in sa had sales. That was another huge controversy and a lot of people are pr getting pretty mad at KISS online. So, also, there's just so much more to look forward to with the classic Blue Note series this month. And of course, who knows what's under the tree for us. So it was a tremendous year. These are some of the highlights for me. Please fill in the blanks in the comment below. What was a highlight for you for this year? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and have a wonderful holiday uh, season. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.